I was speaking in one of the West Coast universities, and while I was speaking there, I'd been invited to speak on a philosophical theme, and I arrived there, and this fellow who picked me up was really quite intimidating, and he took me to a health food restaurant before I began to speak. Ah, I've got nothing against health food restaurants. It's just that I've never seen too many healthy people in health food restaurants. <laughs> you just go in there, and you wonder what's going to come after the sunflower seeds are over, maybe more seaweed or something like that. And it was about 80, 82 degrees, and there was a fellow sitting in the restaurant with a black cape, a black woolen cape that started at the top of his neck and went down to his knees. And where the cape ended, his leather boots began. And I said, oh my, where have I come? And I'm cynical enough to look in his direction and mutter to myself, I wonder whether he's a student or a subject. You know, it just looks so strange. I don't know what kind of a place I'm going into. Till finally, the fellow across the table looked at me and said, I hear, uh, Mr. Zacharias, that you do not believe in evolution. I said, do you mean atheistic evolution? He said, yes. I said, no, I don't believe in it. He said, you don't? I said, no, sir. I said, if you're telling me that matter has caused mind, I don't believe it. He said, you don't? I said, no. He said, I can't believe that a professor would find it hard to give into such evidence. And I said, do you believe in evolution? And he said, absolutely. I said, atheistic evolution? He said, yes. I said, I can't believe that an intelligent fellow will. I said, tell me something. Do you believe time plus matter plus chance has produced your brain? You know, and he paused for a moment. I said, you know time, uh, ooh, long range of time. And I said, matter, you know, bouncing up and down, blub, 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 over aeons of, ooh, lots of matter bouncing over lots of time. And chance, I said, I really don't know what chance means to you. I said, I've read books on the philosophy of chance. I said, but frankly, I've come to the conclusion that chance is just a catch word to explain what you don't understand. I said, if I were to ask you to show me chance, we can't stand at the window together and you say, there goes chance. See, chance doesn't have a body. I said, if you take a coin to toss it into the air, nine times in a row it comes down heads, the possibility of it coming tails the tenth time is 50-50. I said, chance doesn't have a body, it doesn't have power. I said, frankly, I believe chance is nothing. Chance is no thing. I said, and just in case you don't know what nothing means, Aristotle defined nothing as that which rocks dream about. <laughs> That's a pretty good definition of nothing. Unfortunately, he had to bring rocks into it, but it's a pretty good definition of nothing. You can't conceive of it in your mind. I said, but I'll give it to you. Time plus matter plus chance has created your brain. He said, yeah, I, I have to say that. I said, if time plus matter plus chance has created your brain, then truth as an absolute category no longer exists. Because truth by nature is absolute. Time is changing, matter is changing, chance, whatever it is, is changing. You never get time, matter, and chance remaining the same. If time plus matter plus chance has created your brain, truth as an absolute category no longer exists. Because if it is an absolutely truthful statement with the givens, it's true on Monday, true on Tuesday, true on Wednesday, so on and so forth. But with the fluctuation and flux of time plus matter plus chance, truth as a category no longer exists. He said, I believe that to be correct. I said, if that is correct, how do you know it is true that time plus matter plus chance has created your brain? <laughs> do you know what the boy said to me? He said, let's get up and go. He says, my field is science, not philosophy. <laughs> I said, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, we, I got you now. I'm going to listen to you a little longer. I said, if I looked at you and said, my field is theology, not science, you reserve the right to laugh at me. But when you look at me and say, my field is science, not philosophy, I'm supposed to accept that as a very brilliant response. I said, you spent seven years studying one insect in a San Francisco stream in order to get that high level sophisticated education to produce in your dissertation you have spent seven years studying that tiny little object and you're telling me you're not a philosopher i said maybe you should read einstein who said the problem with us scientists is that we are very poor philosophers 
And somewhere in the foundations of science, somewhere in the foundations of mathematics, somewhere in the foundations of physics and chemistry and geology and theology, at the foundation of all of these systems are some philosophical assumptions which you cannot deny. To deny them is to assert them. When you assert them, you prove them, and you cannot deny it without asserting it.